young daughter in a pink top balanced on his shoulders, cheerily waving a flag. A larger version of the same flag is wrapped around her father's body. It's black. It appears to be the flag of the group calling itself Islamic State. The photo was taken by tourists outside the Houses of Parliament at the weekend and first appeared on a Korean website before being picked up by newspapers here. Cue astonishment from commentators and users of social media alike that the man hadn't been arrested. The Metropolitan Police said at the time that their officers did speak to him but concluded the man was acting within the law. Well, Professor Anthony Glees is director of the Centre for Security and Intelligence Studies at the University of Buckingham and Dr Evan Lawrence lectures on terrorism and security. They're both with me. Good evening to you. Uh, Professor Glees, first of all, were you surprised uh, to learn that the police had opted not to arrest this man? I was horrified, absolutely horrified. I think it was quite the wrong thing to do. Of course the police should have discretion and um, they should exercise that discretion and on the whole we should support them when it can be seen to have been exercised properly. But in this case, not to arrest this individual who on the face of it seemed to be breaking a number of laws, I think was a very serious matter indeed. Remember, this came a few days after the murder of 30 innocent British tourists in Tunisia and two days before today when we commemorate the uh, 50 people who were 52 people who were killed on 7-7-2005. It wasn't just a question of carrying a flag. Uh, the flag was being waved by the man's young daughter itself, in my view, uh, worth a police question or two, waved uh, by the young daughter, and it was a very clear case, I think, of the glorification of the Islamic flag, and it was the Islamic flag. Anybody can check the photos and see straight away. It is the flag of the Islamic State, and glorifying uh, this and doubtless encouraging people to see uh, that next to the Houses of Parliament, next to the seat of our fine democracy, the flag of these butchers and murderers was being flaunted. Evan Lawrence, it sounds like an open and shut case. Well, I don't think it's quite that simple. I think that because we're a society that values free speech, and that's one of the, the foundation, foundation principles that, are, that our country is, is created on, we have to be very careful with how we view these and allow the security services to deal with these kind of events because it, it becomes a very slippery slope when we start trying to legislate for thoughts, legislate for beliefs. Having a belief shouldn't be illegal um, and it certainly hasn't been up until now. Uh, if that's something that our, the UK government and the West want to look at, um, then we need to actually legislate for that. But I think that that's going to be very difficult because um, it's whose idea of extremism are we talking about? And who gets and who has the right to, to legislate for what extremism is? My version of extremism may be very different from what your opinion of extremism is. And I think that that's a very um, important distinction to make. Professor Glees, uh, criminalizing ideas is a very sensitive and arguably, some would say counterproductive, as Dr. Lawrence suggesting, counterproductive step. Well, of course, as, a, as an academic, I'm very upset to hear what Dr. Lawrence says and even more upset to think that she doubtless teaches generations of students. I, I, I detect, I don't know Dr. Lawrence, I'm afraid, and I, I, it, maybe she's American. It's not clear when she talks about our country whether she's talking about the UK or the United States of America. But the attitudes that Dr. Lawrence has are in fact very widely held in, in British higher education. And if I may say so, they're very simplistic. Free speech is not an absolute. Free speech exists within the law. Indeed, the law itself makes clear that it is free speech within the law that is important. And if people like Dr. Lawrence, and indeed like me, who work in liberal institutions, whose job it is to sustain liberalism, start undermining liberalism by letting people who are not entitled to use free speech use free speech. We're in big 
trouble, and actually we are in big trouble, because it's what the Prime Minister was referring to, I think, when he was talking about the way people have become tolerant of intolerance. And nobody has become more tolerant of intolerance than academics like Dr. Lawrence, who say that, you know, so, my well, idea let me... of extremism may not be yours. Well, and I think, it, you, say, I how think many it, ideas of extremism I, can I there be? It's only fair to let Dr. Lawrence yeah, come sure, back on course. that and give her a right reply. Go ahead. I, I feel to see how making a differentiation between extremism and someone's idea of extremism um, is productive in this discussion. I think that um, sitting and attacking me isn't isn't the, the productive thing. What we need to be discussing is how we as a society decide who, how, who determines what extremism is. Um, and that's fine. I have no problem with setting boundaries and things like that on what is acceptable, which we have for years had. For instance, you can't stand up in, in a crowded theater and scream fire um, because of the public order on the problems with that. But there's, there's a very big difference between something like that and saying that we're going to criminalize anyone who believes a certain way. Dr. That's Lawrence, very problematic. We're going to have to leave it there. Dr. Evan Lawrence and Professor Anthony Lees, thank you both very much. Gordon Brown left office five.